In this lesson, we will learn about the landscapes that the artist Georgia O'Keeffe created. We will aim to show some influence in our own original watercolour landscapes. This video will teach you how to create a landscape background, midground, and foreground, and walk you through how to paint accurate looking palm trees as shown in this specific Omani landscape. The materials you need are a set of watercolour paints, some scissors, the sponge, a range of paint brushes, large, medium, and small, a water pot and two thick quality sized papers. Here I'm just using A4. Let's first recap about the artist Georgia O'Keeffe who we have looked at previously in our enlarged flower drawing art video. She was an American artist known for her paintings of enlarged flowers, New York skyscrapers and New Mexico landscapes. It is the simple forms and subtle blended painting style that we'll try to replicate in our own landscape today. The image I'll be working from is this first hand source photograph of an Omani landscape. You may choose to work from this image or if you prefer to take your own photograph that's fine. Just be sure to make sure that your photo is the high quality resolution you need and in colour to enable you to, bit, to depict it as best as you can. To begin with you need to create your sky wash. Here I've blended together a diluted medium blue into a deeper concentrated blue to create a gradient effect. It's important to make sure that you only sweep your brush and sponge across the page horizontally in strokes to make the blending smooth. Set your background sky wash aside to dry and then focus on the midground of your picture. So to create the colours here I've started with a dark blue mixed with a little bit of dark brown for the background. I created a couple of wavy lines to create the mountains in the background and then I brought that down to the bottom of the paper to go into a more mustardy yellow. If working with watercolour it's important to work fast as the colours do dry quickly and while the paint is still wet try to remember to use that sponge to smooth and blend your paints together to create that lovely O'Keeffe smoothing blending effect. Let your paint dry for a few minutes before painting a little bit more foreground in. As you can see here I've quite stylized the mountain road and I've made it more prominent and obvious to see. I've used a dark brown for the mountainside and I'm just trying to keep my colours as simple as pos possible as this is the style that O'Keefe works in. So once you're happy with that let it dry and then we'll move on to the trees which is the foreground part of the picture. Next on a separate sheet of paper let's do a quick tutorial and practice drawing a palm tree. The first thing you need to do is take a dark green and just almost create a rounded effect here, just little spikes to create the basic shape. The next thing after that would be to take a dark brown and create a long tree trunk. Make sure you've got plenty of water on that paintbrush there. Then dip your paintbrush into a dark brown and the trick really to getting lots of layers and making it look realistic is to get a darker dark brown over those tree stems that you originally put in in green and the shape of the leaves themselves the palm leaves need to be almost like feathers so they are being brought down by gravity so for example the leaves at the top towards the top of the tree look like they are bending downwards and just on the side here I'm just practicing a few more um, yellows as well and another dark green that I'm going to use and the little dotted technique I'm going to use that as the texture on the tree trunk itself. To make your tree come alive, add some highlights with white once the colour is dry and some yellow and maybe some lighter green as well. After practising the palm tree painting technique, now you need to do the same thing again and just plot roughly where you want the trees to be. Remember this is your own original landscape, you don't have to make it exactly as it is in the photograph but you can alter it and slightly enhance different aspects and make it your own. It's important to use a very thin paintbrush here to give that three dimensionality and that sunlight reflection off of the palm tree leaves. 
Once the paintings have dried, it's time to combine the background, midground, and foreground into one final picture. To do this, take some scissors and cut along the mountain line, then flip that, glue the back of the picture with a glue stick, and align where exactly you want it to be on the sky wash. Then finally, if you find that your painting is a little ripple because of the paint, place something heavy over the top for an hour or so to straighten it out.